What's up, YouTube? This is the 82 and Old Podcast. So, I like to tell stories about players of the past. And here's an interesting story that I don't think a lot of people know. It's kind of been forgotten with time. So, we all know Wilt Chamberlain. He came into the NBA in 1959. He had a great rookie campaign. He was 23 at the time when he came in. He previously played for the Harlem Globetrotters, traveling around the world. But then the Philadelphia Warriors took him as a territorial pick. So his rookie campaign, he puts up 37.6 points per game, 27 rebounds per game, on 46% shooting. And many people don't know this, but he actually retired at the end of the 59-60 season. So I'm going to recap the season. Uh, his team went 49-26. and They were coached by Neil Johnston. They lost in the Eastern Divisional Finals against the Boston Celtics in six games. So here's the thing, right? All throughout Will Chamberlain's rookie season, he claims and in detail that he was mistreated. By other players, you know, you got to understand that during this time, rookies were treated very harshly. And, you know, you hear a lot of these modern stories about hazing going on with rookies. Well, a lot of it, too, could have been jealousy because Wilt Chamberlain had, was the highest paid player in NBA history at this point. And so I think it might have rubbed a, a lot of these veterans the wrong way. And he would just get a lot of horrible foul calls like people would push him shove him and they wouldn't call a foul on him on the guys that punch him you know and a very notable story is if anyone who doesn't know I might do a video on him someday Clyde Lovelet so at the time Clyde Lovelet was playing for the Minneapolis Lakers he started with the Minneapolis Lakers and or I should say the Hawks he started with the Minneapolis Lakers, but he was on the Hawks during this time in the 59-60 season. But he was a very dirty player. He was like a Bill Lambeer on steroids. So there was a game where Clyde Levelet punched Wilt Chamberlain. And he had to have uh, teeth implants after this. He knocked his teeth out. And... Some people will look at it as Wilt Chamberlain's downfall. And what I mean by this is many, many, many years later, in 1999 when Wilt Chamberlain died, he had poisoning from his, tooth implant, his teeth implants and it caused his heart attack. You know, he was in a lot of pain in his teeth that were fixed many years earlier from when Clyde Levelet punched. So essentially, Clyde Levelet was what killed Wilt Chamberlain in a way. I'm not saying like he intentionally was trying to murder the guy. You know, they got in a scuffle. It's not like he knew what was going to happen down the road. Uh, but this kind of led to Wilt Chamberlain's early death. You know, I know 63 isn't necessarily early, early, but come on, the shape that Wilt Chamberlain was in... There's no reason why he shouldn't be here. There's no reason why he couldn't be here till this day, you know. Uh, you got guys like Bill Russell that are still alive, Bob Pettit. Wilt Chamberlain should still be around, theoretically. He was in great shape. So, anyways, this kind of treatment is what made Wilt Chamberlain retire in his, at the end of his rookie season. He announced his retirement from the game of basketball. He said basketball was unfair to him, and... And I said, quote, he said, if he returns, he's going to knock at least 12 guys out. Will Chamberlain was known for having a very short, not uh, a very collected temper. You know what I mean? Like, he was known to be able to control his anger. He didn't get mad easily. So, for him to say these kind of things, you knew he was upset. And so he retires at the end of the 59-60 season. And 
from what I've read, he got thousands of letters from fans all over the country. He got phone calls from fans. Uh, from what I heard, he got letters from people even overseas. People in Russia even <laughs> telling him, don't retire. So, Will Chamberlain realized he had, and I, th I don't think it's just that he cared about the fans. Uh, I think it's also because the... Say the Warriors, the Philadelphia Warriors at the time, offered him eighty thousand a year, which that's still good today. I don't know what the infl adjusted inflation would be, but he decided to come back, and I feel like this is a story that's kind of been lost with time, and it's kind of an NBA what if? What if Wilt Chamberlain never returned? You know, like let's say Wilt Chamberlain just called it quit completely after that. How different would the NBA landscape be? Because he would have only played his rookie season, right? There would never have been the 100-point game. He wouldn't have those two championships. So how crazy would that be that a guy who comes in the league wins MVP in his rookie season and then retires? How crazy would that be if that happened? So let me know what you guys think down below. Thanks for watching. Thank you.